Hello and welcome to News Click. The dispute between Tamil Nadu and Karnataka on sharing the waters from River Kaveri has a long-standing history. Again, the government of Karnataka has initiated a step, a project for constructing another check dam across the river called as the Megadadu project. To discuss more about this and the disputes surrounding the project, we have with us Professor Dr. Janakarajan, a former professor of Madras Institute of Development Study. Welcome, sir. Thank you. So, sir, so, to begin with, the government of Karnataka has shown very keen interest in initiating this particular project across the river Kaveri. With a long history of disputes, what will be the uh, impact of this project or what do you see as the reason for the government of Karnataka initiating such a project? I look at it in two ways. Uh, actually, you know, you used a very mild language uh, that he is uh, keen in constructing uh, the uh, reservoir at Magadadu and he is not keen, he is aggressive. Not only he is aggressive, all politicians combined together show aggression in constructing the what they call the balancing reservoir at a place called Megadatu, right? Now, one can take a very lenient view of the matter, saying that go ahead. If you construct it, it is a I mean, I mean, it's not going to be a big deal for us. Okay, please go ahead, you can do that. But you know, but you know, we cannot afford to do that because we are not opposing the Megadatu project. That is, Tamil Nadu government and Tamil Nadu people are not opposing the Megadatu project for the sake of opposing. We are opposing because it is our livelihood issue. It is our problem of a drinking water issue. Now, Karnataka is talking about the drinking water problem in Bangalore. Okay. And uh, we are talking about the drinking water problem in the entire state. Almost 1.5 crores people in Tamil Nadu depend upon Kaveri water for drinking. And uh, about five, six districts, the agriculture depends upon Kaveri water. And which means about uh, about uh, so something like uh, one crore people depend upon agriculture for Kaveri, depending upon Kaveri water for agriculture, that, 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 that livelihoods. About uh, 30 lakhs, 40 lakhs people are small, marginal, and landless agriculture laborers. Their agriculture depends upon the Kaveri water. Just imagine if the dam is constructed, I think it is gone. The river downstream of Karnataka will become dry it will become a barren land and we cannot afford to allow it we cannot do it and uh, and and, and uh, it, it is su suicidal if we allow this project it is going to be suicidal for tamil nadu i tell you why you can ask me why because already as per the tribunals award if you look at the original uh, the, the, the 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 interim award we were supposed to get 205 teams of feet of water okay that was the interim award. Now that became a big issue, and uh, the, the, there was a lot of who and cry uh, in 1992. I still remember, and people are driven out of Karnataka. There are lots of damages of property for Tamils and so on. Just a ridiculous uh, measure they took, and uh, and uh, and uh, even the people said it's only interim award. People, they, I mean, the, the the people are not willing to listen, including politicians. Anyway, it got dragged on. In 1987, we had the final award. As per the final award in 1997, we were supposed to get 100, um, as a uh, uh, yes, so, uh, uh, 192 teams if it are water. As for the final award, but we all thought that was the end of the matter, and we 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 we, we were very happy, and uh, and so on. And uh, Karnataka for a while felt happy, but then suddenly they they woke up, said no no we are not happy, and we are going to go to the uh, Supreme Court. And in Tamil Nadu, unfortunately. The, the at that time the the, the opposition party was uh, Jayalalitha ADMK. She was making big uh, hue and cry, saying that no no we are going to lose uh, our uh, rights over Kaveri water and we cannot accept it. And it she it became such a big political issue. And then Karnataka had to budge. She also the, the then chief minister he also had to really agree. And then finally all of them went to the Supreme Court. So Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Pondicherry. Uh, Karnataka and everybody went to the Supreme Court. I must tell you something here. The tribunal constituted by the uh, as per the constitution and he, uh, and this tribunal is as powerful as Supreme Court in terms of giving the verdict. Okay. 
now that we got the verdict even the tribunal they make a statement if you have any problems with the award please come back to us for a supplementary uh, award and uh, you can you can you can seek a review you can file a review petition file a review petition we will reconsider you can think about what can be done this this is in fact in the tribunal's award they said it but uh, these states instead of uh, going back to the tribunal which means instead of strengthening the tribunal all of them went to the supreme court with what is called the uh, special leave petition slp so supreme court in all its wisdom supreme court in all its uh, you know uh, modesty should have advised all these uh, contending states to go back to the tribunal saying that look tribunal is ultimate authority we have no business to interfere you go back to the tribunal and uh, they will look into it but instead of doing that they allowed all special leave petitions that is the biggest blunder okay that is the biggest blunder made by us other states and supreme court allowed it uh, i don't know for whatever reason so supreme court after allowing it in 1987 slept over it slept over it for so long until 2018 21 years for 21 years uh, the 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 uh, uh, yes no no i think for 13 years for 13 years the supreme court slept over it and finally in 2018 they came out with a new what they call the verdict or order okay as per that order they reduced further reduced the terminology share from 192 teams feet to 177.25 teams team feet saying 14.75 teams feet has got to be allocated to bangalore for the drinking purposes so bangalore drinking water problem has been addressed and we were, our share was reduced and we were worried and we were and finally we thought okay all uh, uh, um, uh, let it go once and for all with this and uh, let us be at least happy that there will be some water flowing that's what we all expected but at that time i maintained that this is not going to be the end of the matter i said it and wrote about it and i knew that it this this that was not going to be the end of the matter for the simple reason that the government of karnataka was always releasing what the surplus water after filling all the reservoirs only they were releasing the surplus water so the surplus water was uh, whenever the surplus water was uh, coming into the state i mean we thought okay this is is very good very good and so on but the tribunal has very clearly indicated month wise scheduling of the release of water until today i tell you except for a few years since 1991 i have looked at the data until from 1991 onwards till 2018 19 until today except for a few years those were the good years okay on most of the years the monthly scheduling of the water was not released see june july august september october these five months are very cru- crucial for us during these five months 80% of the release of the water should have been done 80% of the release of that is one 80% of 177.25 teams of of water should have been released and should be released during these five months june july august september october but if you look at the data it's abysmally poor abysmally poor it is extremely low and uh, and uh, and at the end of the season at the end of the year they will claim what oh, they have given you already water they have given you 180 teams of it 190 teams of it we, who, we don't want water in november december january when we got not just monsoon so when 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 when, uh, when all the needs are met when there is heavy rainfall uh, towards the end of the northeast monsoon towards the end of the southwest monsoon or at the beginning of the monsoon in mean, northeast monsoon they keep releasing the water and then tally the account saying that we have given you water this is absurd this is a cheating this is a cheating this is a disappointing this is also in a way not adhering to the um, the principles of equity Uh, and uh, and the order of the supreme court and the tribunal this is this is not acceptable at all this is what they have been doing but let me tell you one other thing if they think that uh, they they always claim that uh, the river flows through us first we have to meet our needs and then only give you water and uh, and they all think that kaveri the kaveri is our water and so on first of all you cannot own a water in a river no state can own a water river as uh, a river water and no state can um claim ownership on river no state can claim the river river water is only our water 
and we will have to fulfill the river our needs and then only we can give you water and these are all absurd statement they cannot really do that for the simple reason that the rivers see no boundary rivers flow according to the gravity and according to the topography okay and uh, and uh, there is no state no, 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 nobody can really hold the water nobody can stop the river flow okay this is this is a principle this is this is a common principle of the hydrology now on top of that what karnataka does is if there is a heavy rainfall if there is a heavy flood then they let the water downstream let the flood water downstream and then we have to suffer so if you think that you own the river if you think that you own the river water keep all the water to yourself don't let not even a drop of water even the flood water why did you reduce water in 2018 heavy flood even now see they have released something like 36 40000 cubic of water even today as on day today they are releasing water because the dams are full keep the water is eh? keep everything to yourself don't release it that is where that is where i maintain that river water cannot be held you cannot you, you always have to share and you always you always have to have a good will with your neighbors you always have to develop a good will with the uh, lawyer repairing states otherwise nobody can survive no rivers can survive you will only be killing the river and you cannot create a river so this is a, this is a stand off between uh, uh, karnataka and tamil nadu under these heated conditions the very experienced chief minister of karnataka with all his wisdom in the floor of assembly making a statement a radical statement what he calls a radical statement that he would at any cost construct a dam at megadathu at a cost of 9000 crores in the floor of assembly now, this is unethical this is unwarranted you cannot do that's a political statement you may you may have a, you may have a political gain out of it because assembly election is coming next year so you may have some agenda behind it you may have some kind of a political agenda you may gain uh, have some political gain but do you know how it has affected the downstream farmers that psyche that ang- people have become so anxiety that their ang- anxiousness has gone up so terribly that they, they started worrying because already water is not flowing if you are going to construct a megadath the dam is going to be disastrous that is why farmers here are feeling terrible and that is why the entire state and uh, uh, and uh, entire farming community are feeling not just anxious they are feeling outrageous uh, so the government of tamil nadu has passed a resolution against the construction of the project and they have met the union minister as well uh, to deny the demanding to deny permission for the project so do you feel that uh, the government of karnataka has its rights to construct uh, or even propose such a project not at all so i tell you the karnataka has no right karnataka government has got no right to construct a dam without consulting their uh, n- 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 neighboring states and uh, d- 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 downstream states riparian states they have no business absolutely not possible absolutely unethical and ab- illegally not possible without consulting any kind of intervention on the river cannot be done and should not be done shall not be done the, the tribunal is very powerful people don't understand and the kaveri management board is very powerful so they have to approach the kaveri management board or what they call the kaveri management authority and the tribunal and the supreme court strengthen their hands that is very important rather than talking to the political bosses at the center it is very important to strengthen these uh, legal institutions and if the, the government of tamil nadu should go back to them and file a petition very strong petition after passing the a strong contempt resolution in the floor of tamil nadu assembly uh, sir in the beginning you said that the allocation of water to tamil nadu has reduced over a period of time in, nine, in the in the interim award or in the final award it has reduced so does that anything uh, is that related to the reduction in the cultivable land in the delta districts and the increase in quite a lot land? quite a lot quite a lot you see our agriculture command area originally was a 28 lakh acres now it is reduced to 17 lakh acres 17 lakh acres that's also uncertain kurve is almost gone kurve crop which is supposed to be grown in 4.5 lakh acres in the delta region particularly in tanjavur and below is almost gone wherever ground water is available people try to grow kurve crop but otherwise you know growing kurve crop with the away with the supply of kaveri water is a history is a history 
and people and karnataka farmers uh, sorry tamil nadu farmers are very happy if they get water for one full crop that is amba season so they, they they are happy at least if they can get water for one full crop for one season at least for in a year they are happy that is amba season that begins in uh, august september and goes on up to january february and even for that it is uncertain because only only if you say start receiving water in june you can store water up to the august to september and before the onset of the monsoon you can release water for growing nursery and transplantation and then uh, when the northeast monsoon sets in the the, the crop growth uh, you know picks up but that is even that is not uh, uh, possible even that is uncertain so you, unless you have something like a 100 feet of water stored in the metro reservoir you cannot release water technically you know because then you, you will you will uh, uh, lose water you, because you will, you will find finally at the end of the season you will not have water that is why it is important that we need water we have to receive water from the month of june onwards as prescribed by the tribunal that is not being done you see in many parts of kaveri delta today you know many uh, there are lots of people who say that look you know if there is no water why don't you shift your crop pattern i must tell you something the 70% of the soil type 70% of the soil type in the delta is plastic clay 70% many people don't understand this so you have to talk to the agronomist they know you they know better 70% of the soil type in the kaveri delta is plastic clay no other crop is possible except a paddy and it it needs a continuous watering and if you stop watering even for a day or two you know then the 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 the, 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 the land cracks it, it it cracks actually that's also a cracking clay plastic clay and it is a very risky proposition for farmers they spend the thousands of rupees okay and if they don't go water they lose lose the crop is going to compensate them so that is so people are living in uh, in the world of uncertainty i think people i mean i, I have done a huge project in the kaveri delta i spent 3 years in the kaveri delta i know that that flight i know how bad that living conditions are i know why people are committing suicide there the situation is terrible going from bad to worse from day to day it is it is a situation which i think you would not have you would not really even imagine uh, they, 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 that flight is the conditions are really really bad there are a few who survive because they have access to ground water those who have access to um, uh, access to only canal water that life is miserable and 80% today 80% of 75 to 80% of farmers in kaveri delta are small and marginal and whose land holding size is 5 acres and below what will they do they do they do look for all kinds of odd jobs so this is the situation on top of that if there is going to be a reservoir in magadatu imagine what is going to happen i i want to i i must tell you one other thing see already the magadha the the already we are not as i said earlier we are not receiving water as per the monthly schedule okay and uh, i already said that it, from uh, uh, interim award onwards our share of water has come down drastically from 205 to 171.25 tms of it so when they construct the magadha the reservoir their capacity storage capacity is going to be 67 tms of it so you think we will get water without that reservoir is get filled we will not get water not only that i must tell you one other technical point the magadadu dams magadadu reservoirs dead storage level is 7.75 tms feet which means 75 7.5 7.75 tms feet of water cannot be used cannot be let, cannot be let down it cannot be cannot be drawn from the magadadu reservoir which means so much of water will be stored there but even in a even in a normal year if that much water is stored your your share will come come down drastically you will not get any water i think it is it is it is mind boggling if you go into the details it is terrible 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 i mean i i am at any cost we have to stop this project when when the water doesn't flow into the sea continuously every year i said there are hundreds of uh, backwater canals from kaveri joining the bay of bengal except for uh, once in uh, once in uh, 10 years or once in 5 years water some water flows into the bay of bengal otherwise may for many years continuously these back, uh, backwater canals remain dry therefore the sea water intrusion has already taken place 
and not only there is sea water intrusion there is also coastal flooding coastal flooding see, see the, this evening your land will be dry tomorrow morning that land is uh, flooded with the sea water because of uh, the dryness of all the backwater canals and 100% of the groundwater in nagapattam district is saline and 70% 70% of groundwater in tiruvarur district is saline and in tanjavur 60% of the groundwater is not saline but brackish that means sea water is intruding pretty fast and uh, most of the uh, uh, brackish water lakes like vedaranyam lake um, um, and also pichavaram a uh, mangrove forest have become almost saline because in the pichavaram the mangrove forest should have a brackish water quality but it is saline i calculated the area under uh, the pichavaram forest compared to 1971 and 2014 it looked like you know the area under the uh, forest uh, uh, mangrove forest has gone up but I, when I, when i went to the for, for the ground truthing i realized that it is just a sea sea just uh, come in it is just a sea water it is not a brackish water so that is the kind of a situation of emerging because of the lack of flow from the upstream so that is why i am saying the upstream the water flow from the upstream is extremely important to maintain your riverine ecosystem your riverbed aquifer and your uh, coastal ecosystem now all these things are drying all these things are dying not at all good for us and in the long run we will pay a very big price for it see there is also an ecological issue what is the ecological issue see the, the megadoth dam if they construct there is going to be a land submergence to the extent of you know what 52 square kilometers 52 to 55 square kilometers of uh, dense forest area is going to be occupied is going to be submerged or are going to be destroyed it's a wildlife sanctuary kaveri wildlife sanctuary bird sanctuary it is a, a flora fauna biodiversity everything will be destroyed you may have your uh, you know magadha reservoir for your sir for for the for the for the your uh, short term reason of uh, providing water to your uh, bangalore city but what is going to happen to this uh, flora fauna biodiversity and the western ghats who is going to pay for it entire uh, entire nation if all the concerned states all the states who share the western ghats will pay a huge price for this already as per the madhav gadgil report we have lost three fourths of the dense forest in the western ghats now if you are going to lose further more our water supply rainfall conditions everything is going to get disturbed and there is going to be more landslides this is disastrous i tell you this megadhar reservoir is a disastrous project disastrous project this is a i don't know who suggested and why i don't know i mean a, a good well meaning people a, a, a people with the wisdom will not approve this project i am telling you today people with if you don't have people only those who do not have the wisdom and the long term uh, sort of uh, you know uh, uh, you know imagination only those people suggest this but otherwise you know people with the wisdom they don't suggest this at all thank you sir thank you so much yeah okay Thank <laughs> you.